This is Jay Big Ticket 23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we are going to optimize a Precision T3500 workstation for gaming. Um, so if you've never been to GreenPCGamers.com, you should definitely check it out. Let um, me just go to www.GreenPCGamers.com. And for this uh, video, you're, gonna, you're going to want to click on the blog page. And in the uh, articles, you're going to want to search for T3500. It's going to bring up an article called Make My Precision T3500 Into a Gaming Computer. You want to click on that link. And this blog page is going to show you a whole bunch of awesome upgrade ideas all the way from processors all the, uh, all the way down to um, peripherals and accessories that will work well for your T3500 workstation. Um, so um, you can use this page to optimize your Precision T3500 um, based off of whatever your budget is that you want to spend for upgrading. So we have tons of processor ideas, um, tons of memory options, hard drives, NVMe drives. Uh, there's a prerequisite power supply upgrade um, that you can, uh, you can locate on this page. Uh, monitors, a whole bunch of awesome ideas for you if you have a T3500 workstation. So you should bookmark this page, check it out. Um, it'll be very helpful after you watch this video. Um, so... Um, let's get to our gaming computer. So we're going to show you our specs on our system. Um, there are some components that we already had installed, like our processor, our memory, and our boot device are already installed, um, as well as our 700-watt power supply upgrade. Now, we're going to post in the, in the description um, of this video um, this EVGA 700-watt power supply upgrade because it is a prerequisite if you plan to install a graphics card like a, a GTX 1070 or higher. Um, it's a really good idea to do this power supply upgrade first before you emulate this video. Now, if you're going to go with like something like a 1060 or lower, um, then you should be okay with a 525 watt stock power supply. Um, but like I said, um, you'll definitely want to do that 700 watt power supply upgrade if you if you go with a higher end card. Um, now, our system already has a W3696 core processor installed, and that is going to run at th uh, it's a six core, 3.46 gigahertz proc. Uh, max turbo frequency at 3.73 gigahertz, and we have 24 gig of RAM installed. So we've kind of maxed out our processor and our memory, um, and then we do have an Intel 300 gig solid state drive as our boot device. Now we have that solid state drive as a boot device because we can't boot to the Samsung 970 NVMe drive, but we can use the NVMe drive as a storage device to put like our game libraries or other large programs or other files that take a long time to to open uh, because they'll open super fast on that NVMe drive. Um, if you're curious, uh, you know, a lot of people ask, uh, you know, is there a bootable NVMe drive that will work in the T3500? Uh, we haven't tested it, but we have uh, some, some Intel, um, some people from our community that say they, that they have successfully booted to a Samsung 950 Pro NVMe drive. Um, so, um, if you haven't bought an NVMe drive, um, you can you know you can try to find those uh, 950 Pros on like eBay or Amazon. They can be kind of expensive uh, because they no longer uh, make them new anymore. Um, but if you want your your drive, if you want a bootable NVMe drive, um, you can try that Samsung 950 Pro. Um, and then the graphics card that we're going to install in this video is a Nvidia EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 graphics card. Um, so that's where we're going to see a huge increase in performance as far as frames per second. And at the end of the video, we'll show you what we received for benchmarks with that card. So let's get to our install. Um, again, just another reminder, if you plan to install a high-end graphics card, um, watch our 700-watt power supply upgrade video. Um, so here's our T3500. The system is going on like 10 years old. I mean, you can see it's scratched up. Uh, but we don't care. We're, we're just looking for performance at a good price. And here's our NVMe drive and the adapter and our EVGA GTX 1080 graphics card. So these are the com components that we're going to install to optimize the system for gaming. All right, so first thing we want to do is remove our side panel. There's a little lever on the top right. Just push over to the right. Side panel will come right off. You can see our upgraded power supply on the top right. All right, so put the system on its side. And we are going to access the PCI slots. Um, we're going to remove that bottom PCI bracket. So those are the three slots that our cards are going to be installed into. Uh, but we do need to move 
our solid state drive down to from hard drive slot zero to hard drive slot one because we need to provide more room for our big bad graphics card to fit in the chassis. Um, so we're also going to have to change um, our, our um, SATA devices once we do that. And we'll show you that later on in the video when we actually boot the system up. All right, so remove your drive, unplug it, and remove it like we showed you. And there are three screws that we can remove. Uh, they're Phillips screws. And once we remove those screws, we can remove that metal bracket and that will allow us to install that big GTX 1080 graphics card in this chassis. Now they remove pretty easily. We're gonna use a power drill because we're not worried about snapping the heads off these. Normally you wouldn't wanna use a power drill for, for most of the computer install components just so you don't snap off any screws. But in this case, it doesn't really matter. All right, so that removes pretty easily. Now when we shut this hard drive bracket, um, well, like I said, we're gonna have enough room for the graphics card. Now if you already had two hard drives installed, um, this is just kinda, you're gonna have to give up one of them for this install. So as you can see, we're gonna move our solid state boot device to hard drive slot one. And you know, this is, this is pretty simple to do. Um, those two little brackets, you just pull up on them and then you can twerk the connection to the right. So ours is reinstalled. Uh, we just had to plug our connections back in. And now that we're going to SATA port one, like I said, we're gonna have to go into the F2 setup and change our boot sequence and enable SATA. Uh, actually, it's gonna be, I believe in SATA three, but we'll show that again later in the video. All right, and then next, we are ready to install our upgrade components. All right, so we're gonna put our graphics card in first. Um, so this card is like super heavy. Um, and it's got one A-pin power adapter that's required. Now, because we installed the upgraded power supply, we have that eight pin already built into the that cable harness. All right, so all we really have to do with this card is line it up with a slot and let it just let it drop into place. So it's gonna go right into that blue slot, line it up, and it will, because of the weight, it will it'll drop right into place. Very little pressure needed to install this card. And that's all there is to it as far as installing the physical card. Now we need to plug in our eight pin power. If you don't plug the eight pin power in, it's, it's gonna halt on post and tell you to plug it in. Because this card absolutely needs that power adapter to run properly. All right, so our power's installed, That's super simple. Um, next step is to install our NVMe drive. Now, if you're wondering how to install the NVMe drive into this adapter, we have another video on our channel that shows you how to install an NVMe.2 SSD into the adapter. Um, so if you need help with that, watch that other video and you'll be in good shape. So this, we're gonna mount it below the graphics card fans, even though there is a PCI Express slot above, we're gonna mount it below to give the that graphics card a little more room to breathe. All right, so our NVMe drive and our graphics card are now installed. So now we just need to plug our system back in. Um, there's a few other things that we need to do to prep the system to be ready to game with it. All right, so here's what it looks like from the back of the chassis now. Um, we've got an awesome looking graphics card installed and our NVMe drive. And so, like I said, we're ready to plug the system back in. All right, so like I said, we, we're gonna go back a little bit on that. When we booted it up for the first time, it's saying our drive is no longer working or it's failed. That's just because we had to move that solid state drive over to slot one. So it's, it's giving us an error. We need to go into the F2 setup and change the way our drive is seen so that it, it can be used as a bootable device again. So we'll go into uh, settings, drives, and we're going to enable SATA 3 and disable SATA 4. Because we had our drive zero plugged into SATA 4 and now it's plugged into SATA 3. And now we can boot from SATA 3. All right, so it's booting right into Windows, that's perfect. All right, so now we need to go to nvidia.com to install the latest driver for our graphics card. So go to nvidia.com, go to drivers, go to GeForce drivers. Um, you have the option to let NVIDIA find it for you. 
Uh, it takes a little bit of time, so we're just going to find it manually. GTX 10 series, GTX 1080, Windows 10 Pro 64 bit. And then we're going to pick the latest driver. We're going to download it. And then we, uh, we're going to install it. We're not going to show you the whole install part because that would take too long. So we're going to save it right to our downloads. And then when you install it, it's going to give you the option to install something called the GeForce Experience. Um, if you are not uh, familiar with optimizing games on your own, um, you should absolutely download that GeForce Experience and use it. All right, so next we need to uh, basically assign a drive path to our NVMe drive. So disk one is our NVMe drive. Let's, let's slow down a little bit. We did that kind of fast. Right click on start and go to disk management. And then we're gonna see our disk one, that's our NVMe drive. Right click on it, making a new simple volume. And then go next, uh, it's gonna be drive D. And then we're gonna name it super fast drive. Again, the NVMe drive, uh, we want to put all of our large games, um, programs, other files. Um, we want to put them all in the NVMe drive because it runs at three to six times faster than a conventional SATA uh, solid state drive. So it's, it's a really fast drive. If you've never used one, it'll change your life. All right, so that's installed now. Um, it's ready to install game libraries too. We're going to go and show you the drive. Go to this PC and we see now it's our D drive, super fast, ready to uh, ready to load files onto. All right, so um, that's about all we have for our, the actual install part. Now we did run two benchmarks on the graphics card. Um, using Furmark uh, benchmarks. Uh, with 1440p, uh, we received an average of 80 frames per second. And with 1080p, we were at 119 frames per second. Um, so for a 10-year-old system, this system did really, really well um, for gaming. And now I, I do realize that most of the stress was on the GPU. But as far as I.O. speed, normally there's a lot of bottlenecking when it comes to the CPU on, on, on legacy systems like this. Um, so this system still does really, really well when it comes to, um, when it comes to, you know, being converted into a gaming system. Um, so if you have a T3500, um, let us know where you uh, acquired that T3500 from. Uh, let us know in the comments. Also, if you have any questions, uh, please comment below. Um, also, we do uh, giveaways, monthly giveaways on our Facebook page. So please uh, like greenpcgamers.com on Facebook to qualify for those monthly giveaways. And as always, if this video was helpful to you, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching.